Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys all the books that I read in the month of August. So I want to start with talking about how many books I read. So I read a total of six books. Five of these were physical books. One of them was an audio book. Um, I did not have anything below a four star. So I think that August was pretty much a good reading month for me. The way that I'm going to do this wrap up today is I am actually going to start with my lowest rated book, which again, like I said, I didn't get anything below a four star. So even though I'm starting with like the lowest rating, it was still a book that I very much enjoyed. So the first book I read is Becoming Jesus People by Riley Taylor and Carissa Gobble. So this book is pretty much just a compilation of how many people was it? Um, I don't even remember how many people was it. I think it was 20 different people. Their testimonies of when they were like in the hippie movement back in the 60s, 70s, and how they came to Christ, how they came to know Christ. And I rated this one a four star because although I really did enjoy it, they were very powerful testimonies. One in particular that really just like it made a huge impact on me. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, I just really wanted to know more about the characters. I felt like the way that the characters were introduced was very vague, I guess you can say. Um, pretty much there was no real introduction to the characters. It would just, you know, it was so-and-so's testimony and then whatever the testimony was titled. Um, and then it would get right into the what occurred right before that person encountered Christ. So although it, you know, I think that's pretty much the point of the book is what happened right before or how they encountered Christ, I still would have loved to just hear a little bit more background information about each person. Now, the testimony that really did impact me, um, I think the name was Stephanie, I believe, or was it Stephanie? Actually, if I check Instagram, I might be able to tell you. Because I did post a review on there. But basically, the person was Stephanie. And what impacted me so much about her testimony was the fact that once she started to live at Liberation House, which was kind of like, I would put it in terms of like today, kind of like a sorority house, but for Christians. Um, but it was called Liberation House. And once she started living there, she became one of the leaders of um, the group and one day she wakes up and she hears one of the other girls she was in the women's quarters she hears one of the other girls screaming um and so when she goes to see what's going on that woman was uh demonically possessed and she's telling her stephanie the character that we read about here she's telling her i'm going to kill you i'm going to hurt you um, and so that was just even saying it right now, like I get goosebumps because it just made, um, her testimony so much more, I don't want to say powerful because each testimony was powerful in itself, but it just made it so much more real to see how this transformation in each person was obviously making the enemy very upset because as opposed to him stealing lives from the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God and the people that were already working in his kingdom were ripping souls out of the enemy's hands. And so um, it was very, very impactful, uh, very eye opener to just to see the love and the passion that these people had for the kingdom, for the gospel. Uh, one of the things that really did encourage me was that they were not scared to say to a random person on the street, hey, do you know Jesus? And they would just go on and have a conversation about who Jesus Christ was. And I feel like we're missing that in the times that we're living now. We're, we are all so scared to just go up to someone and say, hey, Jesus loves you, or do you know Jesus? And it's not. I think not everyone is scared, but in the times that we're living now, it's like if you mention Jesus, people, people have a panic attack and feel like you're <laughs> discriminating against them. I don't know, I don't know, but yeah we'll leave it there so the next book that i read um is pray for them which i have here i'm just looking at my ratings i rated this one also a four star so this is a memoir by trisha fenimore and she basically just talks about how she realized over the time 
or over the years that she was racist against um, African American people or people of color. And she basically grew up around family members who were racist and they would make some comments here and there, but that pretty much filtered through her, her body, her brain, her heart. And eventually she started realizing that um, if she was on the street and there was a person of color on the street, she would automatically freak out and think that they were out to get her or to hurt her. Um, and all that led to her feeling called to pastor, to preach. And she ended up in a black seminary where she was the only white woman, white person in that seminary besides a Puerto Rican guy that also went, but she was the only one fair skinned that attended. And she says that um, that just completely changed her. Although she still, while she was writing this book, she was still processing and growing and God was still changing her. Um, but she was healed from racism. And I really did enjoy the book. I love how raw and transparent the author was. I feel like a lot of people, especially with racism, um, which is such a touchy subject, a lot of people won't come out and say, hey, I dealt with this, or I was racist, or you know, when I saw a person of color or a person that looked um, a certain way, I would freak out, I would panic, and I was quick to say, well, this person is up to no good. A lot of people won't say that, won't put that out there. And I think the author did a really, really awesome job putting it out there, being transparent, being vulnerable, um, especially in the times, again, that we're living. But the only thing that I kind of like, it took me aback a little bit, was the fact that this is Christian. Um, she's a Christian author. I did not, I don't want to say like, but I didn't expect for there to be language, it's very mild. So it's not like every page you read, there's gonna be a curse word. Um, but there was mild language here and there. Um, and like I said, it kind of took me aback. It surprised me a little bit because I was not expecting it. But at the same time, she is referencing old situations, things that happened in the past. And she, again, she's being transparent and she's being raw. This was her story. So although I did not expect the mild language, I did appreciate her telling her story the way that it was and not trying to make the situation look prettier or sound prettier, just putting it there on paper as it was in that moment. So I rated this one for another book that I really enjoyed. One thing that I loved was that you see how thick of a book this is the font is actually pretty darn big um and I really like that because I normally do not read memoirs I listen to them so this was a book that um Trisha actually reached out to me so that I can read and review and I was a little hesitant at first because I I can't non-fiction I have to be in the mood for anything non-fiction and memoirs on top of that or biographies they, for me at least, have to be on audio. But I read through it, I got through it, and I really did enjoy it. Okay, so those were my non-fictions for the month of August. Now I am gonna get to everything fiction. So the next book is You and Me and Us, and I rated this one a four star. Um, this was, so this was supposed to be one of my summer reads, and obviously I did read it in the summer but it didn't feel like a summer read. Not because it was bad, but because it was very emotional. Like it tugged on my heartstrings, it really did. Um, this is basically about a family of three, mom, dad, and a teenage daughter. The father gets um, diagnosed with terminal cancer, and now they're taking one last trip to their favorite place, which is Destin, Florida. I won't tell you how the story ends, even though you can probably figure it out. I just said terminal cancer, but I really did enjoy it. It's a summer book. For me, it did not feel so much like summer just because I was very emotional. I got teary eyed. Um, and it just, the mood was a lot different than like the typical summer romance book that you would read. Either way, it was really good. I rated it a four and I definitely recommend. Okay, this next book I do not have because this was my audiobook for the month. I rated this one a four and a half star and it was The Honeymoon Crashers by Christina Lauren. 
I really, really did enjoy this book. This is the novella, kind of like the sequel for um, The Unhoneymooners, which I read two months ago. Um, and I really did enjoy The honey the Unhoneymooners. So as soon as I found out that they were coming out with this short novella, I said, yes, I have to listen to it. I would love to have the physical copy in my hand, but hopefully one day they come out with the physical copy. Either way, I really did enjoy this. I rated it a four and a half because I'm not, so I never listen to fiction on audio. Fiction, I always read. And I listened to this one, obviously, because it was only available in audio. And I just felt like there was, like, the sexual talk was just a little bit too much for me. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but listening to it rather than reading it, maybe because reading it, I can just skim past that part. But when you're listening to it, it's different um and there was also language there that it just it sounded a lot more harsh listening to it rather than reading because again i can skip when i'm reading when i'm listening to it not really because i don't know when the next thing what the next thing is going to be and if it's something um that i don't want to miss so i read it a four and a half star it was definitely a fun one um i i just want to see more of these people's story like i don't know what it is i don't know why i like it so much but i definitely want to hear more of their story like please christina lauren don't stop there give us another one like number three something i don't know all right now we're going into my five star reads this next one is actually one of our homeschool read aloud books and it's the secret scroll or the yeah the the Secret of the Hidden Scrolls. This one is called The Lion's Roar and it's book six. So I normally don't share my homeschool read alouds in my wrap up videos or even in my TBR videos, but I decided I'm gonna start doing it because I'm reading these books to my children, but I'm reading them. Um, and I rate them anytime I read them anyway. So I decided, what the heck, just add it to the video. Um, but yeah, so this is book six. We There are nine books in the series. Um, and we have been reading through all of them. So we're up to book seven now. This was the last one that we read. And this is pretty much just about two siblings, a brother and a sister named Peter and Mary, who go back in time and they have to solve a secret message that's on a scroll in order to not stay in that time. But the time period that they go to is a time in the Bible. So I really, really like it. I feel like these books are really good for, obviously for early readers, like early elementary, mid, higher elementary, upper elementary. Um, but it's also good. I have a three-year-old and he loves to sit in to listen to these. This is really good exposure to younger kids or even to a little bit older kids. My kids are three, five, and seven. They love this. Um, it's not in any way meant to substitute the Bible. But it's good. You want to read something clean, something good for your kids or to your kids. This is a great series to start with. Okie dokie. So the last book is Christian fiction, but for adults. And it's called Something Good by Vanessa Miller. Rated this one a five. Absolutely loved it. The faith element in this was 100%. This follows three different women. We have Alexis, Trisha, and what was the other one? Marquita, I think it was her name. Yes, and Marquita. They're all going through different situations in life, but somehow their situations all connect. Um, they end up building a very, very good friendship. And I loved how much the topic of faith was brought into the book, how much the topic of praise and worship and prayer was brought into the book. I feel like a lot of times... Even with Christian fiction, sometimes the element of faith can be very limited because authors, obviously, you know, they're selling you a book. They want you to read the book. Um, but not many, not many Christian authors, in my opinion, do very good with integrating the faith into what is meant to be a story, right? Um, but I really did enjoy it. Everything about it, I absolutely loved. This was my top read for the month. Um, I am interested in reading another book by her. I think it's called, um, it's something hallelujah. I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but, um, definitely a new favorite Christian fiction author. We'll be reading more of her books and yeah. 
those were my books for the month of August. I'm excited for the month of September to give you guys my wrap up video because it's going really, really good so far. Be on the lookout because I am filming a vlog for the Dreamland Billionaire series that I am currently reading. I'm on the last book as of today, like me filming this video. And the video's almost done because I'm almost done with the book. So look out for it. You're going to be getting a little something extra this month from me. I don't normally do wrap up videos or not wrap up videos. I don't I don't normally do vlogs because I just don't have time to be picking up my camera all the time. I'm a homeschool mom. Um we're youth pastors, we're food pantry uh directors and it's just there's so much going on that I really don't have time to be filming all the time, which is why I also took a step back from my other YouTube channel um but yeah this month i decided to do something a little bit extra because this is a series that i have really been wanting to read yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you read any of these books don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you find yourself coming back to watch more videos and i will see you in the next one